Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I am going to be talking about all of the books that I read in the first half of 2024. So, in my crazy chaotic life, I realized that I have not filmed or posted a wrap up since January. <laughs> And I just wanted to fix that and film a video where I just talk about all the books I read from February to May, which is this month that I'm filming. I just felt like this was the best way to catch everybody up on what I've been reading, what I've been loving, and what I haven't been loving. So, alright, so in February I read seven books. All of them were between like four to five stars with a 3.5 star, which is great. So... February was probably one of the best reading months I had. In February, the first book I read was House of Flame and Shadow, which is the third book in the Crescent City series trilogy, whatever it's going to be, by Sarah J. Maas. I gave this 3.5 stars. Um, while I enjoyed the like world building and the world, world expanding, and I loved all the things we learned about Midgard and Prithian and the combination of... Akatar world with Crescent City and even some Poolins from Throne of Glass. I just felt like this still didn't really live up to what I was expecting. It was definitely better than the second book by a lot, but it still wasn't what I was hoping for, especially considering we thought this was going to be the last book. I know now it's not going to be the last book, but I don't really see how she's going to tie this in to make another book. And so overall like the characters were just okay i think bryce was probably like the most interesting person because she was doing the most interesting stuff everybody else was just stuck in different places and honestly they felt kind of useless at times yeah not the best but not the worst the next book i read was love in the time of serial killers by alicia thompson i picked this up because i really thought the cover was cute and i thought it sounded really quirky and weird and it was i gave this four stars i actually really enjoyed it for the most part. I thought it was really cute. It's about this girl whose father dies so she has to move back to her childhood home to help um like pack up his stuff and get rid of it and deal with all of that and in doing so she meets his neighbor and so she is convinced that her neighbor is a serial killer because he just happens to be like out and about at really odd times and he's just a little strange and in thinking this she makes it a point to just like kind of investigate him a little bit and in doing so, she gets to know him and she falls in love with him. And I thought this was just like a really cute representation of just like grief and dealing with grief and dealing with grief over someone who you may not have liked or who you may not have good history with, especially when it comes from a parent. And then I really loved seeing their like relationship and romance bloom because I thought it was like weird and kind of adorable at times as well. Next, I read powerless by lauren roberts so i gave this one four stars as well this was actually a surprise i wasn't expecting to like it as much as i did it follows a girl who lives in this kingdom where years before a plague came and like wiped out half the population and those who lived ended up developing abilities and so there were those who developed abilities and then there were those who just didn't develop anything. So the king, he felt that the ones who didn't develop powers were a threat and were going to infect everybody again. So he actually either wiped them out or he made them leave his kingdom. And so the girl that we're following, she is powerless, but her father has raised her to be able to pretend that she has some type of psychic ability in order to keep her alive. And so when we start the story, she is a thief who lives on the streets and she accidentally saves the prince of the kingdom without realizing who he was. She didn't really even do it intentionally to save him, she just did it because of trauma. And so, in doing so, she ends up getting entered into this competition where you basically have to go through the rounds and fight to the death with other competitors. And in doing so, you get to basically, I guess, win the chance to be, like, the 
king's right hand man and so it turns out that the prince that is going to be also in the competition because he has to fight for the right to be his brother's second hand person basically so she also takes this opportunity to find out what really happened to her father and who killed him so it's a whole thing it's a whole mystery it's a whole fantasy i thought it was really fun it's enemies to lovers and i like the fact that it stays enemies to lovers and this is like hate to love but then back to hate i felt like we took like five steps forward for them and then like 10 steps back by the end which i actually really loved so i'm really hyped to check out the second book i think it comes out in july and see what happens next for these characters the next book i read was emily wilde's encyclopedia of fairies I gave this one three stars. I really did not like this book. I thought it was really boring. I thought it got a little bit more interesting at the end when they finally crossed over into the Fey Realm, but I didn't really like it. I thought the main character was so unlikable, and I think, I don't know if the author was trying to make her like, like autistic coded or what, but like, you just made her unlikable. The way she just was not like it was like almost like she was incapable of feeling and connecting with anything or anybody and it was just like insane like how weird she was and how weird the character was written i also didn't like the romance i really wasn't convinced about it like the fact that this guy came in and then he was sleeping with people but then he was like i'm in love with you it was weird it was weird and i just was not for it i was like this isn't the book for me i'm not going to continue with the second book i'm so glad people do love it I'm so glad people find it cute but i do not next i also read a bad fat black girl by cecily power i gave this four stars i actually thought it was really interesting this was my second no, my first nonfiction of the year. And I really enjoyed it. I liked the commentary. She talked a lot about just like her life and growing up as a fat black girl and how that affected her her relationships with partners and her parents and family and just how that affected the way the world sees her. So I really loved gaining her perspective in her stories and then the conversations that she ended up stemming within her book around just love and sex. Next, I read The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. So this is actually one of my favorite reads of the year. I gave this five stars. I thought it was so su so sweet, so it was almost like healing my inner child while reading this so it is about a girl or a lady who works as a teacher's aide and there's a boy in her class that she wants to adopt she's fallen in love with him and she considers him to be her son but she just cannot afford the whole adoption process and the person who is in charge his caseworker doesn't believe that she's a good fit because of the fact that she does not have a solid income so she enters this competition that's being held by her favorite childhood author and the competition she has to basically i think go over there and solve his riddles or something like that and in doing so if she is able to do it then he will allow give her the new manuscript to his new book and she can do what she wants basically she can sell it for a lot of money so I thought the story was very cute. I thought it was very like heartwarming and very just like a warm hug because you really touch upon a lot of things like childhood trauma in a way, guilt, grief, like you touch upon a lot of things in this book and I just loved like every character. There was not a character that I did not like in this book. And I just, I don't even know, like, how to say what I want to say. Because I don't want to spoil it, but I just, I want to drive home the point that I just, I loved it so much. And I, it'll be, I think it will, it will definitely be in my top five books of the year. If not, number one. So the last book I read in February was A Vicious Game by M Melissa Blair. I gave this four stars. This is the third book in the Halfling Saga. I really enjoyed this. I thought, again, it brought... Uh, new elements to the story. It expanded the story in a nice way. It ended in such an intriguing way that I'm I'm ready to get my hands on the next book just to see what happens and how this series ends. I feel like I've talked about this a lot, but in case you don't know, this does follow a woman who lives in a kingdom where her people, who are halflings, half fae, and I think half 
elf maybe are either enslaved or are made to serve the king in some type of capacity whether a soldier or whatever she is made to serve as his top assassin and in doing so for so many years she's kind of lost her faith within herself um and it isn't until she meets uh this new rebellion that's coming back to basically overthrow the king that she finds her will to fight again and to and a will to save her people so uh, i loved it i've loved it so far this character is so badass she's always fighting for her people and her and i just i just love it it has a little bit of everything romance action mystery fantasy and this is probably like my favorite series of the year so far that I've really been enjoying. So next we move on to March. So I technically read five books and then I DNF'd one. First book that I read was Some Shall Break by Ellie Marnie. I believe I gave this four stars. Um, this is the sequel to None Shall Break, which uh, I would the best way I would describe it is like an 80s criminal minds so when the psych like the psychology aspect of the of the FBI was really becoming more prominent and they created their own task force to start really studying the psychology behind serial killers and why they do the things that they do but in this instance it's from a teenage perspective so our main character unfortunately had a run-in with a serial killer and she was a victim and was able to survive and so because of her expertise the FBI or because of that experience the FBI recruits her to solve a specific case that they think is tied to her essentially and so this book picks up I think maybe a year or two after that first book and the girl is brought back in because of another case that seems to be tied to her and it's just really good. I love it a lot. Uh, it focuses a lot on trauma and again grief and how to overcome. And there's going to be a third book so I'm really really excited for when that comes out. The next book I read was The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane. I gave it four stars. It is a middle grade by Julie, Julia Noble. So it follows a girl whose mother doesn't really have a lot of time for her because she's like a TV Almost, if you ever seen that show like Super Nanny, where she go, the lady goes around and she helps people like control their kids. Essentially, she does that, um, but in a in a more capacity of like whole family, not the children. So because she doesn't really have time for her daughter while doing this, she sends her daughter to this boarding school, and her daughter realizes that her father actually went to this boarding school, and so she makes it her mission to figure out like who her father was, how, what his connections and ties were to this school, and how does he fit into the secret society that she, she's discovered, like, is in this school as well. So, it's like a mystery, but it's like a cute little, like, middle green mystery, and I really liked it. Um, I'd be willing to read the second book if I ever get my hands on it or anything. Alright, the next book I read was another middle grade, and that was Holopox, The Hunt for Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is the third book in the Nevermore series. Um, I gave this one 3.5 stars. I thought the story was interesting. I liked the mystery behind it. In this one, um, The Wonder Moles are which are like animals that could talk essentially they are falling uh coming down with some type of illness and nobody knows what it is and so because of this illness they're being like ostracized and mistreated and it's a whole thing so morgan takes it upon herself to help kind of solve this so that way um she can help the wonder moles like basically be treated better i really liked uh the found family in this series in the series i like the friend group that she has and the little family that she's made in this world i think i'm gonna check out the next one and definitely continue the series and just see what happens for morgan next we also see her like kind of dive more into her abilities and start to discover really more about herself and her powers so i really liked that as well so then next i read on rotation by shirleen Ab abu abuobi abu abubi Sorry if I'm saying that weird. This one I DNF'd. I was so excited to read like a doctor romance by a black author, but it was not my 
he, it was not for me. I did not like it. I thought the main character, for being someone who went through med school, was not the smartest when it came to relationship decision making. So we start the story and her boyfriend has just dumped her. So now she has to go home for her sister's engagement with no boyfriend. And of course it looks weird because her parents are Nigerian so they have expectations and all this kind of stuff. And not only that but she didn't do as well on her uh, med school test like she thought she did and that is also going to affect her like basically rotation of internships and stuff like that. So, when, on her drive back from, like, her parents' house, she, like, stops and she, like, basically has a breakdown in this garden and she meets this guy. So, her and, her guy, her and this guy, like, hang out for hours and so she thinks he's interested and then as she's leaving, she tries to give him a, her number and he's like, oh no, I have a girlfriend. And she's like, uh, that's messed up because why did you sit here with, for hours with me and then you like have a girlfriend and basically he ba he was weird and he was like well, we could be friends and it's like no because you were not treating me like a friend and so that bothered me so next thing you know they go to a concert for her birthday they run into him and his girlfriend that's a thing and then the next time they meet again they I think he's broken up with his girlfriend but now he's like oh I don't I don't want a relationship but he's like not treating her like a friend like you know when a guy is treating you like a friend and when a guy is treating you like more and he's treating her like more and she is just accepting it and it, it was bothering me it was bothering me so bad because not only was she being delusional and she was like oh we're friends no he's treating you like a partner without the official title and without the extra emotional work and it's no it was it was just annoying me and it was just the fact that he was like oh like we can't be like we can be friends blah 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 and yet like you're asking her to go do all this stuff with you and basically treating it like a relationship and so i just like could not I could not stay with it. I could not keep reading until the end because I just knew it was going to bother me. And I just felt like she was letting herself be used as like an emotional crutch or an emotional outlet without actually making him work or commit to a relationship. You know what I mean? Like even when he was like, oh, I don't want a relationship. That's fine. But then you need to re you need to realize like you're crossing that boundary. And yeah. So um, it was just a frustrating story and I would not recommend it. So then I picked up Rule of the Aurora King by Nisha J. Tooley, which is the second book in the Sun, the Trial of the Sun Queen. I gave this one 3.5 stars. I thought it was good. I thought it was a good continuation from the first book. I thought that uh, we got to see an expansion of the world beyond the Sun, Queen, Sun King's world and then beyond the um, jail that's in the Aurora King's kingdom. So I really enjoyed that expansion and we got to see and learn more about why the Aurora King locked our main character up and her family. So I just really love that we got a good chunk of information and we got to see a lot more within this world. There's two more books left so I'm intrigued to see what she's gonna do next from where this ended. Alright, so the last book I read in March was Finley Donovan Rules the Dice. I gave this 3.5 stars. I thought it was, like, good. I enjoyed the same elements as the previous books. Her relationship with Barrow, how funny and quirky and weird it is. I thought this was going to be the last book, but apparently not. I guess there's, like, going to be another a new mystery introduced or whatever. So, uh... I'll go along. I find these books entertaining. I like them a lot and I like the element that like her partner in crime is her nanny and they're both really like fun. So overall I thought it was pretty decent. In this one I believe they're going to Vegas because they're trying to figure out where someone that was taken in the previous book is and how to get him back essentially and then like they're trying to tie up a lot of stuff from the previous uh, two books, which I think this book did a good job of tying up a lot of loose ends from the previous two books and then like leaving space for a new thing And so I think that's what the next book is gonna be like a new thing All right, so those are all the books I read in March and then in April I only read two books the first book I read was God Killer by Hannah Kainer. I gave this four stars I thought it was interesting. I didn't really know what to expect going into this book But it was actually a lot more interesting than I realized I liked the elements of where 
people are dedicating themselves to these gods and it's illegal so you have to like you have to choose whether you basically support the king or support the gods i like the element that there was a big god war and it's basically gearing up to happen again because the gods are like gaining power again and i liked the little uh it, ga it gave me witcher vibes where uh you have three people who are stuck together who now have to basically fight to get their to to complete their mission and get to where they need to go so you have the god killer who is her it's her job to basically kill gods it's her ability and then you have a girl whose family has been wiped out and she doesn't know why and she knows she has to go to the city of the gods to figure it out so the god killer basically is her like protector and like escort and then you have this guy who was best friends with the king who is going over there to figure out what's going on for the king basically on a mission and they form this like trio and it just gives me witcher vibes because you have like Geralt and Yennefer who are trying to get um what's her face Siri I can't remember that girl's name but you're trying they're trying to get her where she needs to be so she can get get her power or whatever so it just gave me those vibes. I'm definitely going to pick up the second book because I want to see how it ends and I want to see if this war does spawn. And the last book I read in April was Beasts of Ruin by Ayana Gray. I gave this one 3.5 stars. This one unfortunately dragged a little bit for me unlike the first book but I still enjoyed learning uh, other like seeing the other elements in the world and learning more information about what was happening and the gods that are maybe taking part in some of the dark things that are happening in their world um and I liked that there was a flashback element for Kofi's mother because you really didn't really see a lot of her in the first book so I liked that this was like a new element brought into the story and a new perspective as well so I'm excited to check out the third one see how this ends and go from there all right and then May I have read three books in May and the first book I have is Funny Story by Emily Henry. I gave this one 4.5 stars. This follows a girl, a lady whose base, whose fiance has left her for his best friend. So she ends up having to move in with the fiance's best friend's ex. And they basically are like wallowing in their grief together in their apartment. I thought this was a cute story. I loved the dynamics between her and the other ex. I thought they had a cute like dynamic going within their apartment as roommates and then I liked seeing them grow into friends and then into eventually more. I liked that she realized that she really didn't have anything outside of her fiance so she made it a point to build her life back up around the things that she likes and not necessarily around the things that her partner likes and I loved that like we got to see her develop a new friendship and develop like basically a life that was the opposite of what she was expecting it to be. The next book I read in May was The Blood Trials by N.E. Davenport. I gave this five stars. This was probably my second favorite book of the year so far. I really loved this it's despite the fact that the cover looks YA this is a new adult fantasy um it follows a girl whose grandfather has recently passed and she is given the news that his passing may not have been an accident it may have been purposeful so she makes it her mission to basically discover who killed her father her grandfather and why and in doing so she has to go through the uh basically like military boot camp tri boot camp trials in order to gain membership into some of the more secretive sections of their military i loved this it was action-packed it was tense it had a little bit of romance but i liked that our main girl was a fighter and she was a badass and she was always fighting people and I loved that so much. <laughs> Not to mention there are magical elements involved as well where she has uh, certain blood abilities that she has to hide. So I'm intrigued to see what happens in the second book because where this ends a lot of things were revealed and a lot of things are up in the air and so there are certain people that I'm like oh I hope they get punched in the face in this next book and I'm really excited to see that. And the last book I read in May was A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. I gave this one four stars. Uh, I was not expecting to like this as much as I did, but 
I did. I loved it. I did not like the first one, and I think that was because the only people we really got to see were Feyre and Tamlin most of the time, and then we were under the mountain the last half of the book, so we really didn't get to see other places or really a lot of other people. Well, we did, but we didn't. So I think in this next book, I, the element that I enjoyed was that you got to, first, you got to see more Prithian and the secret city. And then you also got introduced to more characters. So uh, Rhysand's group of people, group of friends. I loved getting introduced to them and seeing who they were and their elements getting added into the story. I think it made it more interesting and it made it more fun. And it wasn't just all on Feyre. I loved getting to know Rhysand more and just like seeing him more in his element. And just getting to know him as a Fey and as a High Lord. And yeah, I hope Tamlin dies a terrible death. And I'm really looking forward to, to reading this third book because the second book ended on a bang and I'm intrigued to see what's going to happen in this next book. So that was my early 2024 wrap up. This was a lot. I never want to do this again, so I'm going to try and be more up on my wrap ups or my recent reads. And hopefully you all liked this video. If you liked it, please give it a good old thumbs up. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave all that in the comment section. Let me know some of your favorite books that you've read so far this year. And if you want to see more videos from me, please hit the subscribe button. We're all some flowers and a world full of things.